Welcome to Balancing the Ledger, where tech and finance intersect. I'm Jen Vietchner. And I'm Robert Hackett. And we're here with the co-founders of Blockstack, Muneeb Ali and Ryan Shea. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for having us. So last night there was some news from Coinbase. They've made three acquisitions, including Keystone Capital, which gives them a broker-dealer license pending approval. Now, Coinbase has been wanting to get a broker-dealer license ever since the SEC said that exchanges should sometimes register with the SEC if they're going to be selling securities. What does this mean for them? I think it's, uh, it's great news. Um, we, are, we are big fans of Coinbase in general. Uh, and having a fully regulated securities exchange uh, based in the U.S., I think it's a step forward for the entire industry. Uh, and, and I guess like our view is that there are certain things that are clearly securities. One example could be uh, equity in a company, right? Like I, I don't think anyone would argue that, hey, is this a security or not? We've been functioning very well under the current uh, securities regulations. Uh, and if Coinbase can help uh, tokenize some of these things and have a fully regulated exchange where they can trade, I think that would just uh, be, be a really good step forward. At the same time, Circle, which is now valued at $3 billion, they've been also pursuing some of these regulations, these uh, licenses. Um, in fact, I've talked to their founders quite a bit extensively, uh, Jeremy Allaire and Sean Neville, and they believe that the whole sort of you know, panoply of assets out there are going to be tokenized. Uh, in the future. Everything's going to be apportioned to tiny little digital slices that you can trade around. Um, what do you see as the benefit of doing that? Uh, if you look at how crypto tokens generally work, like, you know, they're, uh, they're traded 24-7. They're, it's very easy to send them from, like, one place to another. Uh, so you can, if you, uh, let's, let's just imagine that Circle is also able to get a, a license and have a fully regulated securities exchange you can transfer these things from Coinbase to another exchange and at will, right? So all the benefits that you see of tokens can be applied to traditional securities. And I think it's a, it's a very exciting area. We don't directly work in it, uh, but uh, we, we think that it's a very exciting area. So I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about uh, your own company, Blockstack. Uh, but before we get to that, I also want to ask, apparently you two were advisors to Silicon Valley, the HBO TV show. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, totally. So we were advisors for the season five of Silicon Valley. Um, that was a really great experience. We got to speak with uh, some of the writers and tell, uh, talk about our experience building Blockstack um, and, and the experience building this uh, new decentralized internet that we're working on. I mean, that's um, such a big part of the show. Is, yes. Yeah, the you know, new got this internet, startup. the decentralized internet, and it's basically based on you guys. Yes. Well, <laughs> well uh, we, we don't say it's based on us. Um, we have, we have uh, we've spoken and had some really great conversations with them. They've, they have other uh, projects that have advised them as well. Uh, one is made, a couple of the, um, the people from the MadeSafe team. So uh, we just look at it like we're working on something that um, we, we care a lot about, and um, we wanted to help them out in any way that we could. How do they execute? How true to life is the show, uh, given your experience in this kind of wacky industry? They're, they're, they're pretty good. They're really good. I, I think they, uh, they get like details right to the extent that you know, if you're a hardcore engineer, there's something there for you to appreciate. But if, uh, and if you're just, you know, uh, they have something for the broader public as well, right? Like, so uh, striking that balance is like usually very hard and, and, and they're experts at that. And spoiler alert, the decentralized internet company in Silicon Valley does an ICO as part of their season. Did you guys recommend that or what was your take on how to properly depict that? We didn't really, we didn't recommend anything in particular. Uh, a lot of the conversations were about what we've been working on, what we've been doing, um, what some of our future plans were. Uh, and so I think uh, their goal was to draw some inspiration from us and from other projects and, and look at the ecosystem as a whole and then paint a picture about, um, you know, kind of figure out what are the really interesting stories that they could tell. Uh, so I don't think there's anything in particular that might have been um, taken from us, but um, we, we just wanted to give them as much uh, context as possible. Well, let's dive in and talk about Blockstack. What are you guys working on? So yeah, so we're, um, we're building a new decentralized internet, and the goal is to allow people to be in control of their digital lives. And we have a full application platform and developer community around making this happen. That means that we give developers with the, the tools that they need, we provide um, support and an environment where developers can communicate, we provide um, some funding as well. Really, this whole thing is to build an entire economy that is decentralized. One really valuable thing that we provide um, and that we're building out as we release the Blockstack blockchain is this thing called app rewards mining. And what that means is that 
developers who have applications in Blockstack that are used and that, are, that provide real value, they will get a constant outflow of funding or of money from the blockchain itself. Right? This is part of the mining system. And uh, we have a system where um, these app reviewers can actually indicate what applications are, uh, are, are being used and what applications are of high quality. And they can actually sustain themselves and be able to have a certain amount of revenue that, uh, where they can go forward. So it's, it provides a baseline sort of business model while they get started and, and can figure out their, their long-term business model. They would receive tokens, the block stack tokens. Block stack tokens, exactly. So what's an example of one of these apps? And uh, are, is this kind of payout mechanism working right now? Or? Yeah, no, so the payout mechanism is not working right now. That's when the, the blockchain goes live. We are really excited about our open source community and, and the developers who are building apps right now. I can give you some examples. One of them is called Graphite. It's an alternative to Google Docs. So imagine, you know, just like you, you are used to using Google Docs or spreadsheets, uh, Google has all your data. In the Graphite example, you would download the Graphite app locally, and you would plug in your private cloud storage, which you know, we, we help with. And off of that, it's very interesting that you are using something exactly like Google Docs, but it's local, it's decentralized, and your data is backed up in the cloud in your, under your ownership. Right? So you control all that data. Another uh, app is called Stealthy. It's a secure messaging app. Uh, uh, it, it's interesting that we had uh, Edward Snowden as one of the keynote speakers at our developer events at Berlin, and he was actually playing around with this app. Uh, and and it, was, it was very interesting to see that people who are like that uh, concerned about privacy are actually trying out these decentralized apps for, for messaging. And what are some of the benefits of having a decentralized internet that you know, currently don't exist? Or maybe what are some of the problems with what we have today? Yeah, I think what would happen with the traditional internet is that you can think of it as people started designing the, the core system. It's not like you know, aliens gave us the technology. Like Those people are still with us uh, who are some of the pioneers of the existing internet. And uh, they didn't build out everything perfectly. Right? And, and some of those gaping holes that you see, like uh, fundamental things that should have been part of the internet infrastructure, uh, those holes were filled by large companies like Google or Facebook. One specific example would be Facebook built out an authentication protocol. And then a lot of developers use that authentication protocol so that you don't have to make like new accounts. But the thing is, now every single app that is using it, they're actually sending data back to a single company, Facebook. Right. If that was a fundamental internet protocol, then users are basically, they are in control of their own username, their own data, and they're not like, uh, a single company cannot just track them. That's just like one example, but there are many things that the, or the traditional internet didn't get right. And there are many efforts, including us, who are actually trying to fix those problems and give developers a new platform that completely just changes the game, right? Like it, it, uh, they can build fully decentralized applications where it's actually easier for them to build these apps than to build them in, in, in traditional ways. Now you're actually putting your money where your mouth is. You've recently put out a request for proposals for people to submit ideas for social networks. Uh, decentralized social networks. Decentralized social networks. And there's a million dollars up for grabs. Uh, tell us about that initiative and what you're hoping to garner from it. Yeah, totally. So the goal there is uh, to provide resources for developers, for startups to build decentralized apps. And really it's about opening up people's, allowing people to be as creative as possible. You know, we're, we expect to see teams that will build decentralized Facebook or decentralized Twitter equivalents, but we also expect to see things that we couldn't have ever imagined. Uh, you know, you even think of GitHub as a social network, uh, SoundCloud as a social network, there's so many different things, but there's even new things that haven't been imagined yet. And we want to really empower teams to be able to do that. We've had uh, over 100 teams actually apply so far, and we're really excited about being able to support them in any way we can. And this is just one of the types of applications that we are supporting on top of Blockstack. There's many more. We believe that we now have that infrastructure where you can build these apps that can get millions of users. If you remember, uh, CryptoKitties on Ethereum became really famous. How could uh, we last forget? Year. And, and as it was getting like 400,000, 500,000 users, uh, you basically couldn't use Ethereum because the underlying platform was like not ready for getting that many users. So this is our way of telling developers that you can now uh, uh, give our, our uh, platform uh, a spin and try building out the next breakthrough app on top of Blockstack. And you will notice that this, this infrastructure has like years of uh, R&D work going into it and, and, and you wouldn't notice some of the problems that you might with other platforms. 
So these are early days, but long, long term. Do you see you know, everyone on Facebook today switching to one of these decentralized platforms, everybody on the internet today switching to Blockstack? How does that look in the future? It's, it's hard to say exactly what the future will hold. Um, I would say we and many other projects were working to building the decentralized future. And it's very possible that if all of this works out, if all of the, the vision of decentralization is realized, that decades from now, it, people will look at storing the data for billions of users in one central location as preposterous. Because at the end of the day, this, what we call the new decentralized internet, will just be the internet if, if all works out. And what that'll mean is that we'll all be in control of our digital lives. It might look something more like each person has their own private cloud. Each person has their own keys on their devices, and they control their identity and their data. And they can bring their data with them from one application to another. And it's more about the, the empowerment of the individual user. That's all we have time for today. Thank you, Maneeb and Ryan, so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us. I'm Jen Vietchner. And I'm Robert Hackett. Come to fortune.com for more Balancing the Ledger. We'll see you next time. Yeah.